Well, how's it going, YouTube? Just another day slash night in paradise, right? That's what I thought. Well, we're working on the uh, 4Runner tonight. This is the 2000 model, and uh, we got a uh, e-brake issue that we're going to be fixing tonight. And a lot of these uh, 4Runners and Tacomas have this problem. Let me show you what's going on. And inside here, there's the emergency brake. I can grab this handle and I can yank on it and it will not budge. It is completely locked up. It acts like there's something in the back that's uh, locking that up, not letting it work. And in the back here behind the uh, differential, you can see we have some cables and we have an emergency brake cable that comes out right here. And it connects to a little gadget here called a bell crank, your emergency brake bell crank. And what this does, when you pull in this uh, handle on the inside, it pulls this cable, and it's supposed to move this rod, and it moves these brake shoes on the back of the drum. Well, the problem is that this uh, thing here, this whole unit, this uh, bell crank, is aluminum, and it's frozen, and it's completely locked up. So what we're going to do, we're going to be changing those, and if we change uh, this one out here, we're going to be uh, doing both sides to make it work correctly anyway. And there's the cable that goes clear across, and that cable works the bell crank over here. Now, I've already disconnected this one over here because I wanted to see if I can get it off. Of course I could not. Uh, you end up breaking the bolts because uh, they're in there from the factory, and you just had to go ahead and buy a new one. And uh, let me show you what these uh, bell cranks look like. So here they are. Um, I bought these at the local parts store. You can get them online also. I uh, paid about $40, and uh, basically, that's what they are. You get your uh, nuts and bolts there and some springs. Get a couple of rods, levers, and some housing. And basically, the whole idea of this, basically it works like this. You pull the emergency brake on the inside, it pulls the cable through here, and it rocks it like this, and it moves a spring, which controls the emergency brake. So we got all this, and there is a rubber boot that goes on the outside that protects all that. And just to show you how bad mine was, here is the one on the driver's side that I took out the other day. I wanted just to look at it. And I, for the most part, I got it apart. But the problem is, uh, these pins... You really can't get them out and i even put this on the press i got the pin started started to come out but if you notice the housing is busted right there so there's really not much you can do with these see how busted it is right there so the best bet is uh, before you even go to take these off just go ahead and buy new ones and if you look closely here i got one of the bolts out right there but the other one just twisted right off so uh hopefully uh, this will help you out and this is the rod that works the bottom of the brake shoe We'll go over that here in a few minutes. All right, so there's a look at the kit. Let's go ahead and get these on and get our emergency brake working because in some states, if your emergency brake doesn't work, if you have a state inspection, it's a no-go. These gotta be working. So hopefully, if you have a state inspection, it requires your e-brakes to be working on these Tacomas and perhaps the uh, 4Runners. Hopefully this will help you out. Fine. Okay, let's get this show underway. Now on the driver's side here, we're going to pop this hub off. Now I've had this uh, this drum off um, earlier, so it's going to be pretty easy to take off. Now if you can't get your drum off, take a hammer and just hit around here until it loosens up and it should pull right off. You may have to wiggle it, it should come right off. These are pretty big drums. So there we are, and here is what we're going to be taking off. Okay, so here's what we gotta take off. We got a half inch bolt right here, and there's another one right behind this uh, shoe, but what we'll do, we'll take a, a pry bar, and we'll pry the shoe back a little bit, because it does have a spring here that will release. And this will give us just enough room to get the other bolt back here, but you can see this, uh, this right here, there's a bracket that runs this uh, cable from the front of this shoe all the way back to the bell crank and this was where when you put your emergency brake on this will move forward and this will also uh, pull this uh, brake pad back brake shoe and uh, that's how your e-brakes work so we have to go ahead and get these out but first we're going to do one thing in the back so here on the back bell crank we got to go ahead and take this pin out right here it's a uh, Probably got a lot of rust on it if you're going to be doing it, so you have to kind of 
plate with it and it should come off there it is and the reason we have to take this off is because we gotta get this pin out right here to release this cable and until you get this pin off you can't do much so I would go ahead and put some penetrating oil in here and oil and just tap it and hit it until it comes loose and while that's soaking you can go ahead and take these springs off right here there are two springs one on the bottom comes off like that I think you can see that just kind of anchors in that hole right there and comes up like that and goes in that little hole right there where my finger is and there's one up on the top and I'll go up on top and get that and there's a, not a lot of room here for me to film in so I apologize for the tightness here and there's the other spring that we take off and these are just basically springs that keep tension on the bell crank so the brake shoes don't rub on the drum and there's the other spring so we'll get that out of the way now we can go ahead and start working this here out take a hammer and just hit it until it comes loose Okay, you can see it's loose, but now we gotta go ahead and get it out the rest of the way because there's a bolt right here that you see this adjustment a bolt for the shoes so the shoes don't drag inside the drum. It's kind of in the way, so take a screwdriver and go up on top and just hit it until it comes out. And trust me, it is a pain in the you know what to get out. I think we just about got it there. Looks like we got it out. Take a pair of vice grips. Go on the top of it and get a hold of it if I can. Here. What a pain. And there it is. So that's really the only way you can get that out. And now we can just disconnect this cable. And now we can go ahead and take this entire bell crank out. Okay, so uh, moving right along, what we want to do is take a screwdriver and go in the front here. And we need to go ahead and get this cable out. Sometimes you can just push on this with your hand, but typically you'll have to have another screwdriver. Get this out of here. Because this is connected onto the bell crank. There we go. Pull this out. Of course, it's probably going to be uh, rusted in there. Let me grab my hammer. I'll just tap this a little bit here, free it up. <clears throat> the joys of living in the northeast rust. <laughs> so there, that is out. And now all we have to do is go ahead and break these two bolts off. And the reason I say don't even try to attempt this job until you get a set of new bell cranks is because these bolts will shear right off. So if they shear off and uh, you think you can fix these, well, if they shear off, you're only going to have one bolt holding the bell crank on. So best just go ahead and buy new ones and like I said they're only about $40 so let's go ahead and get that bolt out there get our half inch and sometimes they come loose sometimes they don't well actually you know what this is a 14 millimeter oh you know what it's actually a 12 millimeter the 14 was for something else so let's see my I'll guess and say I'm gonna take a guess I'm gonna say it's gonna break off oh yes yeah, break it's gonna break right off Yep, see, sheared right off. So this is why you just want to go ahead and get new ones. So let's get this out. Now the other one, like I said, you can't see it there. So I just usually take a tire iron, I can find it here, and uh, put in behind the brake bottom of the shoe there. And just push back like this. And you can get excess into it. In the meantime, you can probably take something and jam it in here hold that in there so it doesn't come back out 
But if you're really good, you can just take your socket and use one hand and get in there and just take it out like this. Okay, I think you can see it now. I just got a pair of pliers kind of holding that pad on the bottom of the shoe back, I should say. And let's go ahead and get this bolt out. And this one will probably shear off also. Yep, it's gonna break. And they're twisted right off, so. So now, let's put our hand behind here and just pull it off. Actually, you know what, let me take the camera back here. All right, so here it comes off. What a nasty, rusty thing. There's the old old one. You can see both of those bolts are sheared right off. This thing is toast. This is aluminum. Aluminum oxidizes. It's really not great. We use these a lot on aircraft. They're called bell cranks. We use them in rudder controls and a lot of things on aircraft. So this is nothing new. Old technology. It works well if you can keep it clean and keep the rust off on it. And there is the back of the four bolts in there. The back of the plate. So let's go ahead and assemble the other one and stick it on. Okay, so there's the old bell crank and here is the new one. I like to lay it out like this and look at the old one to see how it's assembled. And when you put your uh, new one together, you won't have any mistakes. So basically, uh, this one is going to go like this. And that's going to go in there like that. Now before we do that, we have to take these little plastic rubber bushings they give us. And they want us to grease both sides of this and stick those on there before we put the pen through there because that'll keep it working uh, just like it should. So find my grease here and then put some grease on here. Yeah, my gloves are dirty, I know. I go through a pair of these a week, I think. These are the Walmart specials for $3 for like three of them. And they work great for me. All right, so we'll stick that in there like that. Stick that rubber little bushing on the back side like that. And now we'll go ahead and stick this in here like this. Start it in there, and uh, that should be good to go. May take a couple tries here, but we'll get it. There we go. Okay. Let's see how dirty this one is. Oh, it's still good. So that goes like that. Alright, so that's in. And now we'll go ahead and grab our really long pin here. And make sure you look at your old one. Make sure which way the pin goes down. That one goes down. Because so I can tell the other side is sticking through there. And that thing is pretty bad shape. And we're going to stick this on through the bushing and all that. And there we are. And now all we have to do is go ahead and put our clip on. Don't forget this, guy. It'll ruin your day if you don't. Place that on there. Like that. And then go ahead and clean it up a little bit. And really, that's all we have to do. So uh, the final step here is go ahead and put the boot on. Make sure you get the boot clear across uh, down on the bottom here. And here's a little note that comes with it. it. tells you to make sure you grease it up and everything. And now, go ahead and stick this boot on. And this will go basically like that. So, so just on like that. Okay, there we are. Now you want this boot. You want this boot all the way up to the bottom there. You want it nice and flush. You don't want to just get it so far. It has to go all the way up. So let's lay it down here and look at it. And uh, it looks like everything is uh, in the right order. So now all we got to do is uh, grab a couple of bolts here. 
couple of washers and go to the other side and go ahead and put this in. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead and stick this guy in here like this. And you can see I still have my pliers keeping this shoe back so I can get both of my screws in there. Or bolts, I should say. So go ahead and start the top one here. And make sure you do a finger, start with your finger. Fingers are always good when you're starting things. So we'll go ahead and tighten this down a little bit. There's our fingers down. We'll go ahead and stick the bottom one on. And you can see, I think you can still see the hole there with the camera view with my fingers. Yeah. So this one wasn't too bad to do. And I'll say probably in a week I'll get 20 views. <laughs> because not too many people are working on uh, Forerunners. I don't think, anyway. But, like I said, if you have a state inspection and you require your emergency brake to work, this will help you out. So, all right, so we got that one kind of started there. Actually, you know what? These bolts are actually bigger. The ones I took off were 12. I believe these are 13. Yes, sir, they are. All right, so there we go. All right, she started. Go ahead and snug it down a little bit. And we really don't have a whole lot more to do. And the value of your vehicle just went up by watching my video. If you do this job, of course. All right, so snug these down to about 25 pounds, foot pounds. That's what the book calls for, anyway. And there we go. And when you apply your emergency brake, this will move like this. And it pulls that connector rod over that pad, or shoe, I should say. And it makes it work. Okay, so now we got the bell crank bolts tight. Now we'll go ahead and take our tire iron and push back on this brake and release, take out our pinchers and put this back down where it should be. There we go. And that looks about right. And we'll go ahead and stick this on her like this. And uh, if you got a lot of rust here, check this. Make sure it's not in too bad a shape. This one seems to be okay. I ain't gonna worry about it right now. And we'll go ahead and take this and wrap it up around here like that and slide this down in here. Get a pair of pliers. Push on. Actually, you know what? It'd be easier if I just probably did this. Get a screwdriver and push back and push down and release it. And this is all done. So all we have to do now is go in the back and do some work there, and we're done. And uh, if you ever want to change these backing plates, you can get these for about fifty dollars a piece. And you do, unfortunately, have to pull the axle to get these backing plates on here. I know, but uh, this one here is not too bad a shape. I've seen worse, but I think the, the guy that's going to buy this, I think he said he, that's what he's going to do later, but that'll be a springtime job. All right, so this is all done. Let's go to the back. All right, so let's go ahead and get that on. Uh, we'll go ahead and take our pen that we have right here. And we'll go ahead and put this over here like this. This will actually probably go in pretty easy on this side. You can see that too. Take my pinchers and squeeze this a little bit because we bent earlier, if you remember. This makes it a little bit easier to go in. And I think you can see the bottom right there. And now we'll go ahead and put our little clip back in. There we go. So that's it. Now, go ahead and stick our adjustment screw and that on there. For now, we'll just kind of go about a third, away, a third of the way down. We'll make our adjustments later. And we'll stick that back here in the back, right there. 
And this actually rests up against this backing plate. So if your backing plate has got a hole in it or if it's in really bad shape, you might have issues. So just be aware of that. I think that's pretty good right there for now. Now, last thing we have to do is put these springs on that we took off earlier. And we'll go ahead and put the bottom one on first. Well, actually, no, I'll do the top one first. Since I'm already up here, stick that on there like that. I know you can't see this one, but you'll see the bottom one here in a second. And we're going to stick this on here like this. That one's on. Now, you should be able to see the bottom one. And by the way, I'm doing this, uh, what, two days before Christmas. So, uh, this will be your Christmas present. <laughs> Definitely my Christmas present. Grab that. And there's a little plate right here that's welded on the backing plate that these springs go in. And there's a little hook right there. And, uh, how about that folks we are done so uh that'll save you about 300 dollars right there if you take it to a toyota dealer and trust me if you take it to a toyota dealer or another dealer they're going to want to change these backing plates add another 500 dollars on that because like i said they got to pull the axles out okay so here is the driver's side and let me go inside and pull the emergency brake work it and you can see these shoes working And those springs that you saw me put on there behind there, that, that also helps release the tension on these uh, shoes when they go uh, against the drums. So if you have to make any adjustments, you simply put your drum on, you spin it, and you turn this little wheel right here from the back. There's a plug in the back that you stick a screwdriver in or a tool equivalent, and you turn this one way to, to the other to achieve just enough drag on the drum. Stick it on like this. And if it's too tight, then you know you have to come back out here and spin this and make some adjustments. Just do that over and over until you get this drum on there and it just barely drags onto those uh, shoes. And you are done. So basically it's out with the old and man were those things pretty old. And in with the new bell cranks on this 2000 4Runner. Nice hardware. So my emergency brakes now will work and uh, makes me pretty happy. Okay guys, so that's about it. it. Took me about two hours to do this job. Hopefully everything will work out for you. And until my next video, thanks for watching. And uh, until then, I'll see you later.